And so the man who does that, who doesn't uh, depend on his own little ability of his ego, but unites his consciousness with God, then he has God behind him. In fact, he will feel no separation. He'll realize God is the doer, no matter what part we are playing. Let's play it. <coughs> Feeling. We're simply God is part of God's consciousness, is using this vehicle, and he's enjoying whatever it is, or he's not enjoying it. That's his business. But we must realize he's the doer. That's the key to this subject this morning, all for God. God is everything. We should thank him for everything, because everything comes from him. Just a little aversion to show you that everything is is from God, and if you do not like it all the time, just give him the credit. Anyway, why not? He's the doer. This minister was preaching out in the country, and he was shouting away, and he came time to take the offering, so he passed his hat, having nothing else, and uh, the people in the congregation were a little bit financially embarrassed at that time, and so the hat came back empty. And so he, he folded his hands and he said, Lord, he says and prayed, Lord, I thank thee for returning my hat to me. <laughs> <laughs> so remember that. Sometimes it might seem, <laughs> what if he'd lost his hat? <laughs> That's quite a cute little story, a little diversion. So uh, God is all, hat or no hat. He's all. We must realize that. So as long as we work for ourselves, we will never be successful. I've talked with quite a few people, especially those who are uh, well thought of in the different industries, and I find that those who are the top notches, they are the ones that pray to God for help and depend, and, and depend on him. That's a great thing to understand. Do not think you can do it alone, because when you just get all set and everything seems to be coming your way, it'll break wide open. But if you have God, it makes no difference. And the chances are it will not break wide open, because God is mindful of his own. And I find the greatest of them are the most humble. Why shouldn't we be? God is the doer. We're not doing it. He just gives us a little part to play. We must realize that we are his own consciousness, and there is no difference between that and his power which is within us. Just a reference from Master's autobiography, which his uh, Master Sri Yukteswarji says so wonderfully, to allot the Lord a secondary place. Think of it. To allot the Lord a secondary place in life was to me inconceivable. He is the sole owner of the cosmos, silently showering man with gifts from life to life. There is but one gift man can offer in return. There's only one thing we can give the Lord. And he is empowered to withhold or bestow it. We can give it to God or we can say no. And that is the love which he has implanted naturally in our heart. We have free will. We can give that to him or we cannot give it to him. We can return it and he's crying for that love. Because that's the only thing he's got. He's got millions of universes. Everything but that love that he has implanted in the hearts of his special creation, his own children. He has given us free will. We do not have to return it. But he wants it because he has nothing, he has all things but that. And that's why he wants that so much. And so we have this choice. We have free will, as I have said. We can stay out in this delusion, suffering pain and misunderstanding and lack of freedom and suffering until we make up our mind we return home to God, which is what we should do. We have the free will to stay in it, but thank God we have the free will to return home and enjoy what is our natural birthright, the realization of our oneness with his presence. God has given us free will. That's why there's so much trouble. That's why you can never tell how a person is going to jump, so to speak. You may think you know a person, but 
that person has free will to go what and do what he wants to do. And sometimes that's why these disappointments come and these misunderstandings, because they jump the way you think they weren't going to jump. But sometimes, if you are calm and feel with your heart, you can tell a person will never jump except the way you know he will. That's true friendship. When you feel a person, the first time you meet them, that they're not going to change. They will never be different toward you, no matter whether you are pushed down and jumped on and slandered or anything. They will never change toward you. They are your real friends, and the chances are you were with them before. We have a few of those, each one of us, but they're very few. But when you do feel them, that's, as Master said, friendship is the greatest relationship whereby God draws back the prodigal souls back home to him. And when you have real friends, listen, they're invaluable.